Right now, this Alouettes have not gotten off the ground just yet. On second down, Crompton has time and fires and the passes ahead by Chad Johnson. And Johnson's got a first down up to the 47 yard line, a gain of 22, just his fifth catch of the season. That's throwing your receiver open in a small window coming right at you. Shows you a strong arm and darts it in there. Chad Johnson was about to settle down. Looked like he wanted to run a dig. And it became a skinny post and he veered up the football field. Got his sure hands on the ball. That's huge. Only his fifth catch is now wet. Second first down of the game for Montreal. Now Whitaker. Trying the left side of the defense. A couple of yards in the plays. He gets up to the 50-yard line. Marking as a gain of three. You know, Brandon Whitaker is, you know, a very elusive back. When you start running east and west towards the sidelines, I don't care what defense you're going against, particularly a hot one here in, in Hamilton, they're going to string that out in a hurry, and it's exactly what they did there. This is not a good sign for that Hamilton defense. As Antonio Coleman had two sacks last week. Rush in from Auburn. Looks like he's tweaked an ankle. Good looking ball player right there. Really active last week, showing you his athletic ability. Much needed pressure up front from this defensive line, Antonio Coleman. Well, you mentioned holding Toronto to 146 yards of total offense last week. That's the fewest Hamilton had allowed in 14 years in a game. <laughs> you gotta feel good about that. And you know, when I think of Iberwind Stadium and now Tim Horton's field, I think of defense. I think of your face hard-nosed defense and they christened that stadium properly last week with more of the same second and seven now for the Alouettes from their 50. here comes the blitz Crompton stands in and throws right to the first down marker it's a strike and it's caught by Deron Carter his first catch of the game gain of seven first down Montreal oh, that's nice Had a big window well covered by Dev Delvin Bro, well covered, just fighting for any type of movement up field, and ball stuck, stuck on the receiver, and Deron Carter didn't have much space for his quarterback to work with, but Jonathan Crompton found it and stuck it in there. Now it'll end around, and James Rogers. Up to the 50-yard line, a gain of two on the play. Boy, laterally, nothing up the field. All east and west right here for Montreal in their run game. And Hamilton stringing that out beautifully and really shutting it down. See more of this from the Alouettes in recent weeks. Of course, Montreal has had a real turnover in the offensive coaching staff, changes of coordinators and coaches. But we're seeing more receivers and slot backs rushing the football that's the second carry for rogers deron carter's got a couple of carries sj green has a carry here comes the blitz flags are down crompton throws and it's rogers with the catch forced out of bounds of the 39 yard line another montreal first down pending the flag well, gordy talk about we've seen this a lot of a lot lately with receivers and slot backs and extra running backs running misdirections just trying to keep defenses balanced so they can't overplay certain series and formations and it really helps but and I know that Montreal offside Montreal five yard penalty remains second down fourth penalty of the against the Alouettes none so far against the Ticat Tom Higgins gave us some information yesterday they're going to try to set up some things with a little sideline to sideline movement a little fly sweep and then a little special trickery off of that and that's perhaps what they're setting up now Crompton under pressure gets away from the first man and then gets belted by the second as coming in hard there was Hamilton's Arnaud Gascon Nadeau and he unloads on the quarterback as Crompton throws now yeah. third down Montreal Gord, that was a heck of a job just getting rid of the football and not taking the sack for the loss there and showing his athletic ability big kid close to 6'4 probably about 230 235 Shoney, he's got some escapability and avoids a big loss with that effort. Sean White to punt. Kerry Coke stands back at his 10 yard line. And Coke from the 14. Looking for the wall to set up. A flag is down. And 
Cook gets around the corner. And pushed out of bounds at the 24, a 41 yard punt. Return of 11 will have the flag for you when we come back with Zach Kalaros and the Thai Cats having the lead and the football. Zach Caleros back in the lineup for Hamilton. Got a team up for a good start. Here's Matthew Shinetti with more. Guys, to build off something I talked about during the Labor Day Classic, when Caleros was recovering from his concussion, he came up to me and asked, or wondered really about his reputation in the locker room. But it, as I was talking to Simone Lawrence yesterday, he said, Zach never had to worry about it because we all know he's a starting quarterback. We all know he's the guy who has so much attention to detail, but he's also a dude. He's a guy who goes to anybody in the locker room, can strike up a conversation, is always challenging the defense to a game of pickup basketball, actually wants to put basketball hoops in the Ticats locker room but he's also a guy who at any moment can bring so much energy around and that's what Lawrence emphasized he said I, he, Zach has so much energy sometimes I wish he actually played on the defense guys Ticats start the seven yard line after an illegal block on the kick return Polaris at the goal line has to scramble and down he goes he's still like Gabriel Napton again had to break over, the, break out the crossover move down there with the ball was low. They made a nice little fake here. Ball's gonna be low. He goes down and gets it, picks it up, and then right here, right there, nice move. Get back up in the hole. Stop from getting a loss. Gain of one on the crossover dribble. Very nice. Yeah, the dude, Zach Calaris, I like it, Matthew. Probably a good moniker for that kid, because he is a dude. From the eight, Calera sets up the screen and throws it. And the catch is made by Madu. He's got room to run. Moses Madu is off and running. And it's a race now to the end zone. Madu oh, oh, oh. still going. Chip Cox ducks. trying to trace him down, and he'll get him at the 27-yard line. So Moses Madu on the second down screen pass has a gain of 75 yards, but there are three flags down on the play. And it's holding against the tie cats ah. this is coming back how can you hold it's a screen and kent austin who has seen so many important plays negated by penalties flags are everywhere just trying to figure this one out looked like early winston venable overcommitted, and that enabled Madu to get outside and show you his speed. And then we saw That's Chip Cox game. closing speed. Holding Hamilton, number 84. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Montreal, number 12. Will balance the penal penalties at the first spot. First down, Hamilton. So Bakari Grant called for the illegal block. Jeff Tisdale called for unnecessary roughness. So Madu set it up, getting outside. And here, here comes Venable right here. Gets kind of pushed inside. That, you know, that, that's a scheme there. That's no, not so much on Winston, but that's just good scheme forcing him inside. And then here comes Chip Cox just closing big time, showing you his speed. That guy covers the best receiver on the field most every week because of that speed. Winds up being a 39-yard gain for the Ticats, not as much as they'd hoped for. Now we've got an injured Alouette. That's Mark Olivier Briette, the safety, who is slow to make his way off the field. So the, the Ticats rather do get out of their own yeah, and we're trying inside to, the 10, and now they're first down at the 47. We're trying to find a hold on Bakari Grant, number 84, who was flagged, and we're having trouble seeing it. It's not a good sign to see Marco Briette go up, but the Alouettes are deep with Mike Edom and Daryl Townsend in free safety, so shouldn't miss a beat there other than the physical play that Marco brings in, and he's basically the quarterback in that back end, putting everybody in the right spots. Nine and a half to go in the first half. Ty Katz with the ball at the 47 yard line. And here's Madu again with the first down carry. John Bowman makes the stop on a gain of three. One aspect of Hamilton's play that's improved dramatically, Matt, in the last few weeks has been offensive line play. Absolutely. We're going back to screen here. I believe this is Bakari Grant right there with the two arrows on him. Let this play out. And as Venable, excuse me, as Moses breaks it, I think there's a hole right there in front of you. Questionable at best. From the 50, the second down play fake to Madu, and Caleros throws up the field to pass over the head of Andy Fantuz, and John Bowman got the stick 
on the Hamilton quarterback. It's amazing how active John Bowman is, and Zach Caleros, he's already shown us his speed and his elusiveness, and Bowman just staying with him, forcing the issue. Gotta love this guy's motor. Reads it, plays it, just patient, and then closes and forces an errant throw. Can't do any better than that. And that play eerily similar to the one in which Caleros was hurt against Edmondson, running around yes. to the right. Yeah. The Odell Willis got there with a little more intense, bad intentions, and uh, closed in a hurry. And Zach, I th onus is on him, I believe, Gord, to get rid of that football in that particular play you're talking about. Rogers returns the punt 12 yards, and the Alouettes will start their 27-yard line. The CFL on TSN returns to Montreal right after this. And the impossible, the fastest man alive comes to CTV, The Flash, Tuesday, starting October 7th. That's Milton dressed up in a costume. He loves that. I Running wanna... around, showing his speed he's always talking about. The Flash. First down, Alouettes at their 25-yard line. Go out! First down carry goes to Terrell Sutton. I Sutton not much doing there as the tie gets swarmed to football. Just absolutely stymied offensively. First down rushing, non-existent. Hamilton's doing everything to take that away. Guys, to run Carter. You got Brandon London, SJ Green, Eric Delorier, Chad Johnson, Kenny Stafford's not even in the lineup today. Brandon Whitaker, these guys are as good as it gets, potentially. They're just not seeing the football. Certainly not putting in the end zone. Green leading everybody with two touchdowns. Everybody else, zeros except for Johnson with one. Now Crompton throws it up to the flat. The pass is caught by Whitaker. He'll be marked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. He'll be about a yard short of a Montreal first down, a gain of eight. Alouette's completing as a team 51% of their passes. The next worst team in the league is at 58. Well, and that's not all on Jonathan Crompton. Certainly, he's only been seeing time for the last two-plus weeks. And, uh, they had some really issues early with uh, lack of direction offensively. And Brian Dinwiddie is a young offensive coordinator, brought in Jeff Garcia. And that's been well doc documented. But this football team still working through some issues with some great talent, just not able to spread the ball around and give them the opportunity to be successful. In this situation, backed up in their own end, third and short, Gonna go for it, try to sustain a drive here. Tanner Marsh in the short yardage unit, come on. It's third and just shy of a yard. And Marsh on the second effort gets across the 35 yard line and move the sticks for Montreal. That's the fourth first down of the first half for Montreal. Yeah, and they're putting a lot of second and long situations, Gord. First down average today, 0 0.6 yards. Not good for a quarterback that's trying to find a rhythm, flex his muscles, take control of this offense when your first down production in a two down league basically is 0 0.6 yards. On first down, Crompton under pressure and down he goes, he lost the football. Still loose, and finally Brandon Whitaker picks it up at the 25-yard line. That's going to be a loss of 11 for the Alouettes. And once again, the Hamilton defense with all kinds of pressure. Ted Laurent right here. Defensive tackle getting initial push. Good surge, splitting a double team in it, and then balls out, gets kicked. And now it's just... A cluster right there trying to find it. Brandon Whitaker comes up with it. Ted Laurent, the Montreal native. Played at Mississippi. Back. And Jeff Parrott is the injured Montreal Alouette. That's the last thing the Alouettes need to see. They're just now starting to get healthy as Parrott slowly <laughs> tries to get up for the Alouettes. Alan sympathizes. The Tie Cats have five offensive linemen on IR right now. You're not going to get a lot of sympathy from anybody across the league. The rosters have been increased to 46, but I can tell you it's, uh, it's, it's a tough football game. 
Certainly there's a lot of folks going down week in, week out, and you hate to see this happen to one of your best. Yeah, and we talk about Jeff Parrott being one in the right tackle, one of the best in the league. He's right here, and when this skirmish goes on, when the ball's on the ground, he gets rolled up on, and, and it's just unfortunate. Here it comes right there. Ooh, just a little quick twist. Again, another look at it. Move your feet, big man. Dealing with Brian Bulky in his face. Gets so, it from behind. Ryan White, third year man out of Bishops, will come in to play the right tackle spot. It's second. And about 21 for the Alouette offense. The playbook gets pretty slim in this situation. If you, you look at Perry, too, and the way he's walking off so gingerly, it is uh, it is uh, not looking good for his return. Typically, he'd walk it off by now if that was just something small. Big man struggling to get to the sidelines. Four-man rush for the Ticats. Crompton screens oh, it off, and that is smelled out right away. Ted Laurent is there again. The screen pass to Terrell Sutton gets nothing. Feeling it. Big man's feeling it. Read it perfectly. Had a couple, had a little misdirection going over this way, and then it came back with the screen. Crompton's right, set it up, dished it off, and Ted Laurent had nothing to do with that. Read it the whole way. Big boy going sideline to sideline. So once again, Sean White on to punt. Should be good field position for the Ticats as Coke stands back at his 40. Low kick to Coke. Up around the 45. And a great open field tackle made by Andrew Liu. A 41-yard punt return of four. Ticats with a 10-point lead. And their defense get the job done here in Montreal. Hey. Catholics for a second straight win this week. Here's Matthew Shinetti. Guys, and they're going to have to do it without Antonio Coleman. The defensive end is now out of the game with a right leg injury. The training staff just handed him some crutches. But, of course, we'll be watching for to see what's going on with Jeff Parrott and Mark Olivier Bruyette, both of whom went Im immediately to the uh, Alouette's locker room. It has been a season of injuries for the Tie Cats, who now scrimmage the ball first down at their own 47-yard line. Once again, a short field for Hamilton. And Caleros on first down, throws, the pass is caught by Fantuz up at the 50-yard line. Mark got us a gain of three. Andy Fantuz with a touchdown catch earlier in the game, the first of the year for him. Salouette defense this year, Matt, has played well, despite being on the field a lot of time most of the season, almost two and outs, but a lot of pressure on Noel Thorpe's defense. Absolutely, and they're being tested here right now. Zach Kolaris and this Hamilton offense has been feasting on a short field. Winston Venables drawn in at free safety right now in place of Marco Briette. And now Kolaris stepping up, jumps and throws to Ellingson, a first down to the 49-yard line. Almost a three-point shot there by Zach Kolaris. Yeah, it was an old-school jump pass there, kind of like a Roger Staubach, Sam Sandy Baugh. And, you know, you go back here to um, his touchdown pass to Fantus. He had a little jump pass in that as well. Effective. Yeah, they've got so much flexibility defensively. And they can put Kyrie Zabar back, Winston Venable back. Well, they, they got a lot of Montreal. Also, not really missing a beat. Trying to find a stop here, though, against Hamilton. Flags are down. And the play is called. And it is procedure against Hamilton. 39th time this year. The Tuck has been called for this. Hamilton, number 61. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Ken Austin hears that call in his nightmares. Yeah. Procedure, Hamilton. He just got a tick, a natural tick now every time he hears procedure. Head snaps, and that's not a good thing. Hey, uh, talking about replacing Marco Brietta free safety, you know, of course, Kyrie Saber played free safety a couple of years ago, moved him back up to his natural position at linebacker. And, well, they got a lot of flexibility in the back end. Needham's back there now. It's beautiful how they're able to rotate people back and forth. 
Here comes the blitz from Venable. Calaris is under pressure, gets away, and throws to the sideline, incomplete. Just the third incompletion for Calaris in the game. Team out of 16 passing. Nathan and Figueroa are going at it. I mean, I'd like to see the big boys banging up there, and it's exactly what we're going to get. Well, I saw on these two in the trenches. Oh, just driving them. Look at them. Driving them, owning them. I like it. There's a play before. Little headbutt. Little hello. Got his attention. Testing out those new helmets. Mm. I love that interior play. Now flags are down as the ball was snapped. The flag deep in the defensive.